and we are saving the next part for tomorrow. All right. Researchers designed a study to compare the proportion of kids who come to school without eating breakfast in two low-income elementary schools. They take uh, SRS, guys, is just a fancy way of saying random sample. A random sample from, of 80 kids from Delta Elementary and 19 had not eaten breakfast. Okay, two elementary schools means, so that 19 out of 80, which, by the way, guys, was a wonderful year. A lot of good things happened in 1980. Yours truly was born in 1980, right? What's better than that? P hat Delta. So before we just said P hat, now we're saying P hat D because... We're going to have two P hats, so we want to make sure we're distinguishing which one's which. And, um, guys, what is 19 out of 80? I'm not very smart. I need some help. Zero point two three seven five. Point two three seven five. All right. And then at this other school, Lambda Elementary School, so I'm going to call that P hat Lambda, 26 out of 150. So I'll take it out to four just so that both are four decimals. Okay. Does this look like there's a difference between our two schools? So our next question is, is this difference a meaningful difference? Okay, so, so um, what kind of variable is this? Categorical, because the variable is, did they eat breakfast or not? Okay? And we use, per the percents are just used to summarize what we asked each kid. All right. Now, what is our statistic in this case? It is going to be the difference between the two. So what is the difference between the two? Zero six three, so there appears to be a little bit of difference. Yeah, is that a big difference between two groups? You know what's really great from the the teacher's perspective is like literally half of you are going, half, well a third are going like, uh, a third of you are going yeah that's a big difference and a third of you are going no. Like, you're all in disagreement on this, which is perfect from my perspective. Okay. We will do that, but that's not what this is. Because this is not the prob... We haven't calculated a probability yet. Okay, that is just... This is just a factual... This is the difference between the two groups. Okay, so our question is going to be, could this, if the two groups were the same, could this have happened by chance? Because, like, if I take a sample from each group, what do I know about that sample? Those samples, technically? They're not perfect, right? So they're a little bit apart. Is this, like, how far apart do they need to be before we're like, oh, that could just be because the samples aren't perfect. Or it could be because there is a difference. Okay. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is decide is that sampling distribution going to be normal. And to do that, what we're going to do is the n p hat and 1 minus p hat. But we have two samples, yes? So we're going to do it twice. And we need both of these values to be greater than or equal to 10. So let's see. That would be... 
80 times 0.2375, 80 times 0.7625. And then 150 times 0.1733, and 150 times point uh, Can somebody check my math there? Do 1 minus 0 0.1733. Is that right? Okay. All right. And when we do this, like for this one, we should get 19. And for this one, we should get 61. And then here is 26 and 124. It ends up being your number of successes and number of failures. And what are we looking? Those numbers are greater than or equal to 10, so can we say the sampling distribution will be normal? Everybody good? So far, anything new, in all seriousness? Anything crazy? Not really? I'm good with not really. Okay, now, sample procedure. Okay, my null hypothesis. How many samples do I have? Two. two. And what do I want to like do with my two samples? I want to, like, we're trying to compare two populations, yes? And the operation we do with comparisons is a subtraction comparison. So it's going to be that the proportion of delta minus the proportion of lambda has to equal some number. And my null hypothesis is going to be that there is no difference between the two. And then if we have, if our sample's weird enough, we'll reject that and conclude that one is bigger than the other. Okay? So as I say PD minus PL equals, what number should I put there? Zero. Zero. Because the idea is... Will re if there's enough evidence, I want to reject that they're the same. And if they're the same, their difference would be zero. Is everybody okay with this? All right, now. My alternative hypothesis is that when I subtract the two, well, let's look at my samples real quick, y'all. What do my samples suggest about the answer of delta minus lambda? That it's bigger than zero. Well, I don't know why. Because delta minus lambda on the samples is bigger than zero. So that's how we decide which side, like whether we do greater than or less than. So if you always start with the bigger of the two sample values, okay, then your alternative will always be greater than. How we doing? All right. Notice that there's no hats on my peas. Why? Because we're not talking about the, uh, the proportions of the samples. But... Well, the hats are the proportions of the samples, but I don't need to run a test to know the difference between my two samples. I know their values. I don't need to write a hypothesis about them. I know them already. The question is, do these samples suggest the bigger picture to be one thing or the other. Okay. All right. Now, hey, guys, when we have proportions, what do we do with our test statistic? Or what kind of test statistic do we have? It's not Z star. Z star is what we use for a confidence interval. Our Z statistic kind of goes like this. I'm going to write a really fancy formula, and then I'm going to simplify the really fancy formula, okay? When you look, my sample value is p hat delta minus p hat lambda. Like, it's one value minus my null hypothesis would be zero. 
and then I divide by the standard deviation. No, I had that right. But remember, this the standard deviation formula when you have two samples is a little bit more complicated. That's a D. It's a lot. I, I'm not arguing with you on it. It's a lot, which is why everything's open note in here. And for those of you looking at that and getting flipped out for AP, you, you're given this formula. Like, you, you have all the formulas given for you. Because I know a lot of you are t taking AP next year. You get a formula sheet that has a lot of this stuff on it. So don't, don't flip out about it. Is it a laminated sheet? Hmm? The one you get from me is, yes, the one from the college board the day of the actual test is, no. But you'll get a laminated formula sheet, probably not on the first day of school, probably not till we do something that uses the formulas, because I'll forget. But, yes, you will get a laminated sheet with all your formulas on it. Oh, so we do get a sheet, though, for the actual AP test? Yeah, it's included in your test booklet. And um, there's not a single assessment you'll take with me that doesn't have the formula sheet on it. Okay, it's going to be okay. Okay, now, guys, slightly simplified version. You guys with me that our null hypothesis is always zero? And what do we know about everything minus zero? It's itself, so I can just ignore the minus zero. Okay, is that Okay. All right, so we get, well, we already did p hat delta minus p hat lambda was 0 0.063 over the standard deviation would be, you know, some stuff. Uh, 0.2375 times 0.7625 over 80. Big fancy formula. I have no concept of what that works out to be. That is not even in the mis guessable by Miss Meister range. If you had to guess, how long would it take you to try? You had to do that, didn't you? I did. I feel like I'm you curious. want to waste time. You feel like I want to waste time? No, I feel like John. No, that was a genuine question. Um, how long would it take me? About two minutes to get an educated guess, but it wouldn't be that good. Um, Who knew this donuts would be that motivating? I'm going to guess point zero five two. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I was trying to guess the denominator only. And I bet I was close. Is all I'm saying. I said point zero five two for just the denominator. And given that the answer was one point one one, I bet it was pretty darn close. That's actually so impressive. One point two one. Wait, huh? What's your denominator? No, just the square root. Yeah. Just this part. Yeah. Was not one point two one. Oh, my guess was right, is what you're saying. Uh -huh. well, what was the margin of error? Not point eight. Did you take the square root? Yes. Huh. 
Come on, man. And also, there's a high chance of error with all these numbers. So, Point zero five seven for just the denominator. I said point zero five two. That's not as close as I would have liked, but I'll get there. Okay. How did we find our p value once we knew the z statistic? Normal CDF? Like, let's go back. Perfect. So we're gonna, you know, do draw a normal curve, zero, sigma equals one, 1.11. 1. 1, 1. DK sold out at seven o'clock this morning. You're the best. So. Thank you, Mr. Peter. Thank you, Mr. Peter. You're welcome. The best is, did you hear about the eighth grade field trip? No bus, bus didn't show up. Yeah, they're coming tomorrow, and they only get to be there for three days. Peyton was sitting in the office on the floor this morning because they it? they made a mistake and thought they were coming tomorrow. That's so tragic. Oh, oh my god! god. So, so all these kids were showing up with like these big bags and stuff. Like early. They did give them all day off. Though. There's like twenty of them in DK right now. <laughs> that is so sad. That is. Now you you're not getting the donuts till we're done with this example. All right, so guys, have you put this in the normal CDF yet? Doing it. You think I can guess this one? Okay. Zero point one zero five. All right, that is really bad. Guys, I'm sorry. I'm ashamed. I shall do better at my guessing. All right. So, remember, the p-value is the probability, like, hey, if the null hypothesis is true, and in this case, so, like, if there's no difference between the two schools, the probability we could get samples this far apart is, like, 0.133 is, like, not that crazy. 15% or 13% is like reasonably likely to happen by chance. Okay, so since our samples, notice how yesterday I said sample and now I'm saying samples because there's two of them now. Okay, that seems like something Ms. Meister shouldn't be picky about, but I'm going to be very picky about it because that's actually the whole premise of us doing a, two a unit on two samples. Okay, since our samples are reasonably likely we can't rule out the null hypothesis. And in fact, what I'm going to say is we can't rule out that the difference happened by chance. Because that's really what that null hypothesis is, is that the only difference is everybody good so far. Yesterday, our null hypothesis is zero. All right. Say so highway patrol is what, testing whether using certain signs along the road actually influences the speed of cars. I'm thinking about, you know, how, like, they have the big light-up signs that have goofy messages on them. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, where the target, yeah, 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 distracted driving corridor. Like, if you go just north of um, 
on 71, like towards Cleveland, there's a, hey, we're really looking for distracted drivers in this area, right? Like, are they, does it actually influence what they're doing or is it just like, hey, we're trying to scare you? Oh, yeah, they're always seasonal, for sure. Like, during Easter weekend when I drove up to Toledo, there was, like, I can't remember what it was, but it was, like, don't put all your eggs in this basket or something like that, drive sober or whatever, okay? You, you guys know what I'm saying? Like, they always have those. So do they actually influence drivers' behavior on the road? Maybe. Yes. Like, it's not going on. So if I wanted, if I was, like, I'm working for the, because, like, they have to pay someone to come up with the messaging. They have to pay to have all that installation, all that kind of stuff. They might want to do a small study to decide, is it actually effective? So here's what they did. They took two different stretches of highway that get similar driving patterns, okay? And they put the signs in one side and measured the average speed. And then they put the sides on the other one. Wait, they only put the signs on one of them and then compared the average speed of the cars. Did they actually do this? No, I made all of this up. But it doesn't sound interesting. All right, so um, what, kind, and what they measured was the speeds of the cars. What kind of variable is that? That is quantitative, right? How fast the car is going is a speed, is a number. I do like that those signs, like on the days I'm tired in driving, they do like make me laugh a little bit which is always nice, like, or if I'm like in a cranky mood, because sometimes when I have to drive to Toledo, I get kind of cranky because I hate the drive, and I've done it so many times that having like something to laugh about is kind of fun. Hey, typically, what are our statistics when what we deal with is a quantitative variable? <laughs> As Soren says, X bar. So, this time, though, we have two different x-bars. Um, if I use x-bar S and x-bar N for, like, signs, no signs, is that an okay, like, dis dis distinguisher? That's not – that felt really weird to say. Dist yeah, like, I, uh, there's a word I want. I feel like it begins with a D. But I can't. Distinction? Distinction? You don't satisfy Thank you. You look like you're just going to laugh like so hard right now if you have a chance. Laughing isn't thought or isn't speaking. He can laugh. So laugh, Lauren. All right. So the statistic we are interested in is uh, we're going to do x bar no signs minus x bar signs, which is 74.28 minus 71.34. And I wrote 38 for no reason. And I need some help here. 2.94 miles per hour. And um, for means, what's the rule about normal? Each sample size, but this time it applies to both samples, have to be at least 30. So what was my sample size for the signs group? Uh, how many cars? 35. Is 35 greater than or equal to 30? And then for the no signs group, it was 40. So will it be normal? Sure will. Mm -hmm. 
Snow it. I write my hypotheses. H O and H A. What do you think H O should be? But what? You with me? Yeah. Like when I say what e it, it's going to be equal zero, but what equals zero? N is three. Not n. X not x. What symbol do we use to represent the mean of a population? What symbol do we use? Mu. Mu S minus mu N equals zero. Oof, oof. Hey guys, I'm gonna do that the other way. You wanna know why? Because we did it the other way up top so that the answer was positive, so I wanna be consistent. Where we did the no signs minus the signs. We definitely need to be consistent there, okay? Now, my alternative is going to be that the difference between the two is positive or negative? Our sample suggests that it's greater than zero. Is three miles per hour a lot? I mean, our difference was... 2.94, rounding up to 3. Is that a big difference between speeds? Is that a difference between speeds? Or is that a difference between average speeds? So start thinking through, 3 miles per hour for 30 cars is a pretty big, I don't know, well, we'll see. You, the way, so the, is it a lot? The, what we do is we find that T statistic and that P value to make that conclusion because what is a lot is really hard to say, okay? Is three miles per hour difference a lot? Well, if I have five cars, it's not that crazy. But if it's 30 cars, maybe it is. I don't know. Because that's what it is. This is not a difference between two cars. This is the difference between the mean of two different samples, both of which had at least 35 cars in it. Are you guys with me that this is a, it's more substantial that way? All right. Our test statistic for means, which test statistic do we use? T. Okay. Again, I'm going to give you another really fancy formula. It's going to be x bar n minus x bar s minus 0 all over the square root of sigma n squared over nn plus sigma s squared over ns. Because technically, what we subtract is the null hypothesis, okay? That you take your estimate minus whatever's going on in the null hypothesis, which is what we did two days ago. Er okay. But that being said, in the actual calculation, we don't really worry about it. So for this one, what this is going to look like is... Wait a minute. X, we already figured out that x bar n minus x bar s is the 2.94 that we got above. Okay. Now, the bottom here, what is the standard deviation of the no sign group? It looked uh, 5.32. Is that right? And there were 40 of those. And then... 3.45 squared over 
What are we getting? So then to do that p-value part, this time are we going to use normal CDF? We're going to use T-CDF. So, what's crazy is her AP exam is this morning. So is it just her? Well, she doesn't just teach AP, right? It could be a different class. Do you think she's got horses up there? I'd rather think that she's just running back and forth. Yeah. Even though she's injured. The right broken now. arm? Physical therapy. Well, you don't have your arm. Yeah, she has a class right now. She has another one. <laughs> TCDF. <laughs> hey guys, what's my degrees of freedom here going to be? We normally do our sample size minus one. Which sample size do I do? The smaller one. The smaller one, so 34. 2.87 to the right. I would imagine this is pretty unlikely because that's a pretty large T statistic. Point zero zero three five. Pretty unlikely, huh? So should so uh, remember this is saying like if the two highways were actually the same, okay? If that null hypothesis is true, the difference in the means would be zero. Could it have happened by chance that we got a difference of two? Point nine four. This is the probability it could have happened just by chance, but the fact that samples aren't perfect. I think that's low enough to convince me that it didn't happen by chance. Okay, so we're going to say since our samples are unlikely, we can rule out H0. Not good enough. If we're ruling out H0, what are we concluding? No, we're ruling out the null hypothesis and concluding the alternative hypothesis is true. Yes? I think, oh, I don't know. I thought you said we're concluding the null hypothesis oh. is true. We're concluding oh. the alternative is true. I, I probably said the wrong, said the wrong thing. We're, we're concluding that there's HA. So, guys, if this hypothesis is true, what does this hypothesis really mean? It's the mean of the no sign group is bigger than the mean of the sign group. So, in the context of this question about should they put signs along the highway, the answer is yes, because the no signs group had a higher speed than the signs group. And from the state highway patrol's perspective, they don't want people driving faster than the speed limit, right? I mean, yeah. So, not only can we rule the null hypothesis, we can say the average speed on the highway with signs is smaller than the average speed
So when we end up with like that spam risk, when we end up with a significant result, y'all, okay, then we have to like take that conclusion and make, take it a step further and make sense of it in the context of the question. Because that's the whole point of this. If you don't make that conclusion, then you're not really answering the question involved. 